Hi, my name's Claire Bickle and welcome to today's Green Thumbs Up episode. Today, the topic that we want to talk about is curbside appeal. And what this means is beautifying the front part of your garden and even possibly your verge. When you're thinking about beautifying the front part of your yard or even around your letterbox, you need to think about the aspect. Is it a full sun, hot westerly position? Is it shady? These types of things will determine what plants you'll be planting, as obviously all different various types of plants have different needs. But there's a lot that you can do with not a lot of money too. You can simply plant a variety of plants. So we'll look at some of the different types of plant categories that you can use. To start off with, colour. A pop of colour at your front gate or at your letterbox or along your fence line can be fantastic. You can use flowering annuals and these are obviously seasonal and they will need to be changed. You could even incorporate flowering perennials and these will last a lot longer. There are also flowering shrubs and there's drought hardy choices like Bambino, Bougainvilliers which are dwarf and compact, hibiscus and many more. If you want to step away from colour, because you've got to understand sometimes the front part of your yard is not somewhere where you frequent and so watering might be a bit of a tricky issue. Maybe choose some drought hardy choices, succulents, Mediterranean plants and even a lot of our Australian natives are extremely drought tolerant. This ties in with habitat because a lot of our Australian natives also encourage bird life, native bees and other wildlife to your garden. And it can be lovely to have that attracting feature of rainbow lorikeets visiting plants like grevilleas, bottle brushes and so forth. The next step is maybe you would like some scent. Scented flowers, scented foliage can be a really lovely thing to have, especially for people passing by on their walks. And to flip your backyard and your front yard completely over, why not have your vegetables out the front or a fruiting tree? There's no reason they have to stay out the back. You could have them in the front yard and even have a sign up saying, please help yourself. This is a crop swap spot where we can come and share our fruit and vegetables and herbs. So today I'd like to take you out the front of my place and I'm gonna show you how to plant a plant successfully and how to be as water wise as possible when you're doing that. So we're here in my front curbside garden and today I've chosen this beautiful Grevillea Dorothy Gordon. It's a new variety that has the most stunning purple flowers. It's a larger shrub, it's very drought hardy and it's going to be bird attracting which is going to create amazing street appeal. I'm using a native planting mix for this because it is a grevillea and a lot of your natives like banksias and the like prefer the native planting mixes because they're good for drainage and they're also low on phosphorus. Once I've planted this grevillea, we're going to run a dripper in. We already have some irrigation in this garden and other plants I've planted set up with this dripper. Dripper irrigation is a great way to conserve water. A lot of the misters you find the water can evaporate off and blow away. This system allows the water to drip directly into the root system and give you that effective watering. And if you want to be really clued up, you can even put it on a timer. So you don't even have to go and turn a tap on. It will do it automatically for you. So let's get started. So to prepare the hole, what I've done is I've actually dug it to the depth of this pot. Also, we like to cultivate two to three times the width. And that's what I've done here. And I've added in some native planting mix. The next step is to plant your plant. And if you want to be really, really organized, you can actually fill your hole up with water beforehand and let it drain away. This ensures that the soil moisture around the plant is there to start with. So next, out comes the grevillea. Just tap the pot lightly. And you can see there, the roots aren't too root bound, so we don't need to tease any of those up. The next step is to place your grevillea, and every plant has a front and a back. I think that's the front, and place it in the hole. So now that the plant is in the hole, the next step is to backfill it with native planting mix. So I'm just going to push that soil in and around the root ball and make sure that I've removed any of the air pockets. This is important when you're planting to ensure that there is moist soil in and around that root ball. 
So now I'm going to mulch and today I'm using cypress mulch which is a really long lasting mulch which is ideal for this grevillea because it's a long lasting shrub. The reasons you would use mulch is to help conserve soil moisture. This way you'll have to water less so long term you're saving on your water bill. The other reason you'd like to mulch is because it'll suppress weeds. And the other thing is that a really lovely bag of mulch can be another great way to sort of increase your curbside appeal. These days you can even get coloured mulches if you want to get really fancy and artistic. So I'm going to spread this mulch around. I'm going to make it a few inches thick. So that way it will also slow rainfall down when it occurs and help the rainfall infiltrate the soil, stop erosion. And also having a nice layer of mulch, it acts like a blanket which will help insulate your plant roots from temperature fluctuations, especially during the summer heat. Any excess that I've got from this pile, I'm gonna spread around the rest of the garden because I think that's gonna really finish off this area on my curbside garden. Now that we've spread our mulch, the last and final step is to water this grevillea in well. Today I'm just gonna water it in with a bucket because later this afternoon, I'm going to hook up a little tube pipe from our dripper irrigation system for long-term watering and establishment. I'm really happy with this addition to my curbside garden. I think it's made a wonderful addition to the plants that I already have here. And in the future, this will be a wonderful food source for attracting birds. I think now after all that hard work, I'm off for a cup of tea. Today's WaterWise tip is brought to you by SEQ Water and Urban Utilities. And what we're looking at is choosing drought hardy plant species. This is a great way to save water as these plants don't need as much watering as a lot of other plant varieties. Choosing Australian natives is one aspect, succulents, Mediterranean plants. And if you are planting trees, be sure to choose trees that don't have invasive roots. This is really important, especially when you're considering where your water pipes are and maybe your utilities pipelines for wiring and things like that. There are many small tree species that can give you a sunblock and shade and provide habitat too. So talk to your local garden centre today about what choices might suit your aspect and your climate zone. I've shown you how you can create some fantastic curbside appeal with the use of plants, but there are other things you can do too. Making a really big insurgence in our neighbourhoods, we're seeing street libraries, and this is where people can leave books or take books. People have also added seeds into that and created a seed bank with their street library. And even some really creative people have added things like insect hotels. This is where solitary native bees and wasps can make their homes. You can also even just add a coat of paint to your litter box to brighten it up. You don't have to have a lot of skills. You can use recycled materials and your creativity really is only limited by your imagination. Thanks for joining us today for Green Thumbs Up. Hope to see you soon.